Good afternoon. Here we are again for the second part of why we need to prepare an emergency plan. And we're going to go to into the development of the of the plan. This is going to be the first part of the development phase. But the first thing I would uh, suggest for everyone is actually if and when you prepare your plan to create an introduction page where you have some text that shows and it explains a little bit what the situation is, what is the collection, what is the object that needs to be protected by this emergency plan. And it's also a tool that can be used uh, when you have, um, when you are hiring new personnel, just looking at the, the introduction phase gives them an, a layout. Okay, what is the structure? What is around it? What is the situation? What has been happening in, in the last years? So they get an introduction to what the, the, the institution actually is about. Uh, there is different um, sources we can draw from to actually develop a plan. This is one of the of the possibility that is presented. Uh, definitely one of the very first phases that we always want to introduce when we are developing a plan is the risk analysis. What are we doing in the risk analysis? Well, we have heard a list of uh, possible threats and dangers uh, to our uh, collection, to our culture property. Some of them are even repeated here. What do we need to uh, analyze here? We need to analyze what is the likelihood of this event happening? Am I living in an area where earthquakes are very unlikely or are they likely, frequent, or even almost certain? That gives us one of the two factors in, in our consideration here. The second one is the impact. If this event is going to happen, what kind of uh, outcome will it have on my collection? Is it going to be a low impact, medium, big, or actually critical? the whole collection might even be destroyed. And just by simply multiplying these two factors, we reach uh, even uh, mathematical uh, values that are for some people easier to understand. On the other hand, we are filling in this, this matrix also with a traffic light system. The greener part shows us the smallest risk where our uh, collection is uh, less exposed to threats less harmed by these threats. When we go into the da dark red one, the, the, the threat is very present. It's of very high importance. These are the things that we should actually take as priorities and address immediately. There is different sort of documents that uh, can help us, even describing what sort of, of threats uh, we might face, getting researching what has been happening in the past. And this all helps us to get an understanding what the, the threats to our collections are. Uh, we can even uh, correlate the data and put them in this sort of risk matrix, where we actually are conducting the risk assessment for each uh, threat, and then we all combine them together, for example, for one item or for one room, one part of, of one sector of my of my collection, and they see, okay, which are the ones that I should address first because they ha have higher values, and which ones probably are not going to threaten my uh, collection as much. Another factor uh, we always need to consider in our emergency plan is the emergency team. Who has to be part of the team? Which are the roles? What are the responsibilities? And even what are the authorities, the powers, and of course, also the limits. If you look at uh, internal resources, we, uh, we have an owner and director or deputy director. These normally are not part of the emergency team. Emergency team starts by the leadership, normally the emergency coordinator and one or more deputies. We might have a curator inside that gives us a particular expertise, somebody from administration or budget, because also we need to understand the procedures and you find the funding for that. A team manager gives us the uh, expertise from his perspective, maybe some tools that we can use. Uh, security staff, in this case, they are uh, part of the organization, so they're not hired from my side. They are uh, 
part of the organization itself. We might have a labor of a safety manager that is actually giving a different perspective more on, on the safety aspect for um, operating personnel, a lawyer that gives us legal counsel, public information uh, and media manager that gives us, okay, how are we going to transmit this information about what is happening also to outside to our stakeholders, logisticians and uh, transport personnel and drivers. They're obviously looking at the material part, uh, flows, procedures, sizes, weights, kind of uh, uh, um, movement of, of objects and activities. Then we might have, we might definitely need someone from the workshop, people who are uh, able to do some restoration, who are able to do the packing in the professional manner that is necessary not to damage our pieces, to handle them in the proper way. And then if we have them, we might also consider volunteers or friends of the institutions are part of our internal resources. Uh, it is important that the roles are well defined and uh, it's actually very easy to see there is different uh, color codes at the first glance I understand who is in charge and uh, there is obviously a meaning to, to the color and I can distinguish different roles. Uh, during the um, the exercises, uh, during the emergencies, you we don't need to have uh, uh, experts working on every single piece. For example, in the handling, they can just be supervising uh, the uh, operations of, of practitioners of our volunteers. And we allowed ourselves a little joke on the right hand side and uh, charge Napoleon actually uh, taking over the role of security and uh, impeding access during our exercise. If you look at the external resources, uh, very diversified, could be obviously the Ministry of Culture, if existing at different levels, national, regional and local level, logistics specialists, uh, companies that provide drivers uh, possibilities, uh, transportation, art transportation, packing. Please do not forget law enforcement and police personnel at the different levels. Get in touch with them, get, uh, get to know them, invite them to your institution. The same thing for military commander at different levels, because these are valuable resources that might be able to help you out in difficult situation. And they have ordinary roles even uh, outside emergency situations. The more they know you, the better they know your facility, the easier it's going to be for them to actually be successful if they have to intervene. And obviously we can have, we should look at academia, at schools, at religious, sport institutions and associations because we could have the volunteers there. They might have expertise at a university to handle um, my pieces or um, they have might have uh, storage spaces. They uh, might have might might uh, give us to as as a, as a secure location to store our items. You might hire a risk assessment and um, expert or a planner to actually develop our plan if we don't want to do it ourselves or if the institution is very complex. Well, we might actually hire the services of a security company. So in this case, it is an external resource. The same thing goes for an external lawyer offering us legal support. Very important, absolutely key to be in touch with regional and local government. Obviously, there is a win-win situation if we are known by the local politicians, also the local politicians are happy to be known by, by us uh, there is definitely advantages in being shown uh, um, uh, protecting the, the cultural property. Uh, insurance companies, uh, have you ever thought that you might even uh, ask for a smaller premium because you are developing a plan and you are taking measures to actually keep your uh, institution safer and your collection safer? We might also use services of public information and uh, outside media managers. Again, you know, marketing our institution and also the efforts that we are creating for developing a plan. Since money is always necessary, sponsors, donors, maybe banks, financial institution, private uh, sponsor might give us the means to actually be able to conduct these activities. 
civil defense is absolutely key, especially if we have uh, uh, natural disasters and catastrophes. And then the media, again, is mutually beneficial uh, uh, rapport. If you're able to uh, provide them with information and, and possible articles that they can, they can provide. And on the other hand, we can ask them to actually uh, give publicity to what the activities we, we are conducting. The internal plan. Well, there is more than one uh, level of plan and the um, internal plan, the one is kept within the institution is the most complex one and is also the most thorough one, the one that has the most complete, that has all the information inside. Please always create hard copies because in times of need, if the information is stored in, in the computer, then the computer is underwater or in the museum and that is on fire, then it is useless. Also, fire department might be allowed uh, to have a smaller version of the plan with some information they might need and they might even consult when they're coming towards our institution. In other cases, the plan is available at an outside location close in proximity of the, of the museum. They acquire this, this information and then they have all the data that they need to actually conduct their activities uh, on our benefit. Uh, definitely floor plans are part of these folders to understand what is inside, where key equipment is, especially to act in emergencies. One part that we definitely need, at least in part, so some extracts within the, um, with the folder with the emergency plan is our inventory and especially the prioritized uh, items. If there is no possibility to save the whole collection, then a decision must be taken. It must be taken before the emergency. Which pieces can I save in which condition? It is my experience that unfortunately even top institutions don't even know exactly what they are responsible for because they do not possess a full, complete and updated inventory. So one of the things that's definitely gonna be helpful to get an inventory established, what we have, what are we responsible for, is gonna help us also to understand what we need to save if the emergency actually happens. There's now there's the possibility to uh, organize and create digital inventories actually for very agreeable prices, not so expensive anymore. And the top piece is the one that are really the priority. They are definitely um, contained, their, their data is uh, collected within so-called evacuation cards. Let's have a look at one. Evacuation card is a simply laminated uh, A4 piece of paper. The data that is inside gives us very key and very, very summary information about the piece, the identification code, some measurements, the weight, how many people are necessary to actually move it, uh, what is the elevation over the ground where it is stored in case there is smoke, and then how to access it. There should be a picture taken from the door of the room where the item is actually stored. So when Let's say the fire personnel arrive at the door. They know already in which direction they need to look and they have an idea where it is. And then obviously a very detailed picture so they can understand what exactly is the one piece that I need to take out. At the back side of that piece of paper, there is the access way, the shortest and safest access way, which is also probably the way that personnel is gonna take to get out. Laminated because very often there is um, conditions of uh, high humidity, rain and whatnot that might destroy normal paper otherwise. Emergency materials, we need to start creating our uh, storage of emergency materials. Some of them are mandated by law, some of it is information panels, uh, some of it for, for uh, first aid. Other materials are actually necessary to actually save our collection and they need to be acquired and stored possibly in, uh, uh, in different locations within our institution. So if one is actually hit by an event, then the equipment in the other one is available. Safe to storage. If we need to move the pieces because they are under threat within the location where they are, we need to find a possible second location that must be safe. Otherwise it makes no sense to evacuate the pieces. One possibility could, for example, be 
barracks of, uh, of the military. This is during one exercise that we conducted and the military actually supported us in, in moving the pieces as well. The military has uh, personnel, they have forces, they have a lot of trucks. And in this case, even nice storage cap uh, capacity in the proper condition so we could store our pieces properly. If you're looking at developing an emergency plan, what are the key points that we need to remember? Well, first of all, the introduction, it gives us understanding what the collection is, what are we protecting? Second step is a proper risk analysis to understand which kind of threats are endangering our pieces. We need to define the roles and responsibilities and powers of the emergency team. Then we need to define our internal plan with all the details, with all the attachment and annexes. We need to create an inventory and prioritize the most important items and good luck with that with your curator. That's one of the most difficult things, generates a lot of discussion. Then evacuation cards for the, the pieces that are so important that if it is at all possible that we need to actually uh, try to save them. Uh, we need to understand and, uh, and consider what kind of emergency materials we need, acquire those materials, uh, store them in the proper way so that they are available in case of emergency. And then safe storage that gives us that the possibility to move the items, to evacuate them in case our institution should not be safe anymore. This concludes the second model. Thank you.